All right, we are back today for the third episode of the ins and outs of emotions. And I'm Megan Hefner, Chemical Health Specialist with Youth Service Bureau. The Youth Service Bureau helps youth and families learn skills they need to be more successful at home in the community or in their school and throughout the community. Some of the services that we offer at Youth Service Bureau are youth focused family counseling, diversion services, including awareness classes, youth and family education, school-based chemical health services. We're located in Cottage Grove, Stillwater, and Woodbury. And you can check us out uh, by phone, website, email, and Facebook. So the objectives, again, for the series on emotions is to guide students to help name their emotions, gain coping skills, and to share resources available in the community. I want to just touch again on the important basics of emotions um, because it really all comes down to these couple uh, bullet points here. Um, so all emotions are okay. It's how we express them that matters. We all feel and express emotions differently. Emotions can be triggered by something happening inside of you or outside of you. Emotions come in different intensities. It is possible to experience more than one emotion at the same time, and everyone needs to work on regulating their emotions, even us adults. So today we're going to go into coping skills. And really, coping skills are learning how to first express our feelings and then learning to regulate them. Because after children learn how to identify and express their emotions, they can then regulate them, allowing them to have control over impulses and behaviors. So right now we're going to go into a video um, about the importance of expressing your feelings. And parents, this is more geared uh, to your viewing, but you can certainly take this information and uh, teach it to your child. Everyone feels things. And sometimes those emotions are so strong that you just want to laugh or cry or scream. But then you think better of it, right? Well, as cheesy and new agey as it might sound, it's often healthy to just let those feelings out. There's evidence that expressing your emotions and connecting with the emotions of others is good for you, both physically and mentally. Bottling your feelings up might seem like a good idea at the time, but studies suggest that's not a healthy way to deal with emotions. For example, in a study of 111 people in 2013, researchers found a small all positive correlation between a person's score on an emotional suppression scale and their mortality risk basically how likely they were to die for any reason. It's not clear exactly how suppressing emotion might lead to your death, but it could be that it makes you more likely to choose unhealthy outlets for your feelings, like smoking. And other research has linked how you handle angry and hurt feelings to aggressive behavior, which is also generally not great for your overall well-being. Aggressive and angry people are more likely to suffer from coronary heart disease and are at higher risk of heart attacks, for example. On top of that, aggression is linked to higher rates of anxiety and depression. And while it might seem obvious that people who aren't great at controlling their anger are more likely to experience aggressive outbursts, it turns out that folks who try to suppress their angry feelings too much can also end up being more aggressive. Researchers think this might be because suppressing your negative feelings makes you feel worse in the long run, which in turn makes it harder for you to make good decisions and pushes away the people who care about you. And other studies have connected emotional expression, or lack thereof, to all sorts of things that can influence your health and relationships, like anxiety and stress or risk taking. And it's not just about how often you're laughing or crying. Appropriate emotional expression is also about perceiving the emotions of other people. This is sort of summarized by a psychological concept called emotional intelligence. A person's emotional intelligence includes their ability to interpret and control their own emotions, as well as recognizing and understanding the emotions of others. It isn't just a psychological concept. Researchers are actually trying to study the underlying neuroscience as well. So far, emotional intelligence has been connected to activity in the brain areas involved in the circuits that process emotions, like the amygdala, prefrontal cortex, and anterior cingulate cortex. And while emotional intelligence has become kind of buzzwordy in the business world these days, unlike many fad terms, there's actually some good science behind it. Higher scores on measures of emotional intelligence are linked to better mental and physical health. And your emotional intelligence can dramatically affect your communication with others, 
whether they be friends, family, or even business partners. That's because emotions provide important data and context that influence your interactions with other people, says psychologist David Caruso. He told SciShow that emotional intelligence is an ability. Basically, it's a skill that can help you communicate better. When you're in touch with your own emotions, you're not only better able to manage them, you're also better able to empathize with the emotional experiences of others, which can help you develop better relationships in business and at home. And ultimately, that means a healthier, happier life. But not all of us are great with our feelings. And if you're one of those people who doesn't deal with emotions well, I have some good news. While psychologists may debate whether or not you can really get better at emotional intelligence, research has found that training can improve your ability to identify and manage emotions. And according to Caruso, there are definitely strategies you can use to make it easier to use emotional information when communicating. An example would be to create a list of questions to ask yourself in any given situation to help read the emotional setting. Like, how do I feel? Why do I I feel that way. What is the Everyone feels things. And sometimes those emotions are so strong that you just want to laugh or cry or scream. But then you think better of it, right? Well, as cheesy and new agey as it might sound, it's often healthy to just let those feelings out. There's evidence that expressing your emotions and connecting with the emotions of others is good for you, both physically and mentally. Bottling your feelings up might seem like a good idea at the time, but studies suggest that's not a healthy way to deal with emotions. For example, in a study of 111 people in 2013, researchers found a small positive correlation between a person's score on an emotional suppression scale and their mortality risk basically how likely they were to die for any reason. It's not clear exactly how suppressing emotion might lead to your death, but it could be that it makes you more likely to choose unhealthy outlets for your feelings, like smoking. And other research has linked how you handle angry and hurt feelings to aggressive behavior, which is also generally not great for your overall well-being. Aggressive and angry people are more likely to suffer from coronary heart disease and are at higher risk of heart attacks, for example. On top of that, aggression is linked to higher rates of anxiety and depression. And while it might seem obvious that people who aren't great at controlling their anger are more likely to experience aggressive outbursts, it turns out that folks who try to suppress their angry feelings too much can also end up being more aggressive. Researchers think this might be because suppressing your negative feelings makes you feel worse in the long run, which in turn makes it harder for you to make good decisions and pushes away the people who care about you. And other studies have connected emotional expression, or lack thereof, to all sorts of things that can influence your health and relationships, like anxiety and stress or risk taking. And it's not just about how often you're laughing or crying. Appropriate emotional expression is also about perceiving the emotions of other people. This is sort of summarized by a psychological concept called emotional intelligence. A person's emotional intelligence includes their ability to interpret and control their own emotions, as well as recognizing and understanding the emotions of others. It isn't just a psychological concept. Researchers are actually trying to study the underlying neuroscience as well. So far, emotional intelligence has been connected to activity in the brain areas involved in the circuits that process emotions, like the amygdala, prefrontal cortex, and anterior cingulate cortex. And while emotional intelligence has become kind of buzzwordy in the business world these days, unlike many fad terms, there's actually some good science behind it. Higher scores on measures of emotional intelligence are linked to better mental and physical health. And your emotional intelligence can dramatically affect your communication with others, whether they be friends, family, or even business partners. That's because emotions provide important data and context that influence your interactions with other people, says psychologist David Caruso. He told SciShow that emotional intelligence is an ability. Basically, it's a skill that can help you communicate better. When you're in touch with your own emotions, you're not only better able to manage them, you're also better able to empathize with the emotional experiences of others, which can help you develop better relationships in business and at home. And ultimately, that means a healthier, happier life. But not all of us are great with our feelings. And if you're one of those people who doesn't deal with emotions well, I have some good news. While psychologists may debate whether or not you can really get better at emotional intelligence, research has found that training can improve your ability to identify and manage emotions. And according to Caruso, there are definitely strategies you can use to make it easier to use emotional information when communicating. An example would be to create a list of questions to ask yourself in any given situation to help read the emotional setting. Like, how do I feel? Why do I feel that way? 
What is the other person feeling right now? And then use that information to help you make decisions. You can also work on your emotional vocabulary and think carefully about the words you're using. Rather than saying that you hate broccoli, which indicates a very strong emotion, try saying you dislike it instead. This prevents overusing strong emotional words, which can take away from their meaning. And as Crusoe pointed out to us, sometimes it's a good thing to do a little suppressing. Not all emotions are appropriate for all situations, and being able to navigate emotions in a social or professional setting is part of this important skill. But emotions are an unavoidable part of life. They're part of what it means to be human. So even though we're often expected to cover up how we're really feeling, research is showing that being open to your emotions and those of others can improve relationships and individual health. Maybe it's about time we all had a good cry and started opening up about our feelings a little bit more. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Psych. If you have young people in your life who you want to a share SciShow with, we have a SciShow channel just for kids. Check out this recent video on why we cry when we're sad. So as the video stated, it's really important for us to learn how to express our emotions, not only for our own health, but our, the health of our relationships um, and just being able to better cope um, with stressful situations. And so um, our job as parents are to help our children, one, as we talked about in the earlier videos, how to identify and name those feelings, but then learning how to express them in healthy, helpful ways. Um, and so first of all, we want children to feel as though their feelings are validated. Um, when they feel validated, they can recover more quickly. And when we say things like stop crying or you're not really hurt, um, children learn that they aren't okay to express those emotions and don't recover as quickly. Um, and so then um, next we need to remember that our job is to remember um, that it's our job to listen and not to solve their problems. Um, we can help guide them along their way, but they really feel empowered and validated when they're able to solve the problems themselves, but with us alongside them. Um, and then lastly, when you allow kids to express their negative feelings, they learn how to talk through them rather than trying to avoid them or cope with them in the unhealthy ways. Um, as I see um, in my work as a chemical health specialist, a lot of kids learn um, to avoid or cope with their feelings in negative ways. Um, and it's very natural for all of us to want to avoid negative feelings because it's not, it's not enjoyable, it's not pleasant, um, and it's hard to deal with. Um, and another point uh, to teach our kids is while everyone has the right to their feelings, they don't have the right to express those feelings that hurt others in ways that hurt others. Um, and when children choose inappropriate behavior or when their feelings and emotions feel beyond their control, um, we really need to help our children by acknowledging uh, what we believe is behind the behavior. And that really helps bring to light um, their, their emotions and how to cope with them. Um, and so the next uh, point is not only teaching our children the importance of expressing emotions um, and doing so in healthy, positive ways, but then we can um, come alongside them and help them learn regulation tools. Um, and so as you can see here, a long list of coping tools um, that kids can resort to. Um, but spend time with your kid and make a list of, of what helps them when they're feeling sad, when they're feeling mad, when they're feeling out of control or anxious. So sit down with them and make a list together and then post it. It can be posted around the house. Um, they can carry one to school or in their backpack or in their wallet. Um, and so they can have those tools ready when they, when they need to, when they're starting to feel um, big feelings. And then we wanna practice with our kids um, and doing so when they're regulated because in the heat of the moment, it's very hard um, to come back to these tools. And so to really practice when they're regulated so they're easier to access when we're in the moment. And then um, really help our kids 
um, naming their feelings, um, as we mentioned in previous podcasts. Um, so when they are, when we can see that they're feeling upset about um, something, when they're angry, when they're sad, we can name those feelings and then we can be, um, we can suggest tools to use um, before it gets too big. So we really want to be aware of triggers and to be watchful and to help them um, in those moments where we see, um, hey, I see your pacing. Hey, I see um, your fidgety. Hey, I see you. Um, I see you're really tired today or have low energy. And so um, tell me more about that. And then um, when you're sad, maybe we need to go listen to some happy music or maybe we need to go on a walk or maybe you need a hug. And so we can have those tools ready and have um, to be able to offer them when we notice our kids experiencing different emotions um, and do it with them, be with them in the moment. Um, and so go on a walk with them. Um, go play outside with them, go exercise with them. So being with them and maybe they don't, um, they aren't able to access those tools or get to the, um, a point where they want to use those tools, but still just being with them and being with them in their emotions is, um, not only hugely helpful for them, but it helps build your relationship as well. Um, and again, it may not work every time, um, but you, but keep trying. Kids may not be open to it at first. They may not be able to get to um, a point where they can get to using those tools right away. Um, and they just need to practice more and really make that a part of, um, just making that a daily practice will be helpful in, in having it really work. Um, and then lastly, help kids learn how to repair their relationships. So whether it's sitting with a kid and practicing how to apologize or accepting apologies, it will make a really huge difference. Um, and it may even, hey, let's pick up this mess together. Or when you got mad and you punched that wall, we need to fix it, but we'll do it together. Um, and again, it will teach them to do that repair and it will build your relationship at the same time. So another fun uh, video that you can go uh, watch with your kids is um, the emotion segment from StoryBots that many of our kids might be familiar with. Um, and it's just a fun video about um, different emotions and songs that go along with it and some, um, some real life kids and uh, their thoughts on different emotions and what helps. Um, and so after um, today, after watching this podcast, what you can do is sit down with your um, child and one, go through the you know, list of coping skills or create your own um, and then tie them to emotions. And so um, you can sit down and say, hey, when you're feeling anger, what would be helpful for me as your mom or dad or um, caring adult in your life? What can I do to help? What can I suggest? What would be helpful? And so go through each of those and really sit down with them and, um, and create a list and create um, a toolbox to, um, to go to in the moment. Um, and some additional books that you can check out at your library um, that one talks about emotions, but it goes a step further in talking about what we can do when we're feeling uh, dysregulated or feeling those big emotions, um, practicing mindfulness and um, things like yoga and positive things that we can do when we are feeling big things. Um, and then um, not only could you check out some books, but there's also some free websites and apps that you can um, hook your kids up with. Um, some common ones are Calm or Headspace or Go Noodle Flow. Um, and those are really fun to do with kids too and give them a visual and um, get their bodies involved. And lastly, um, just uh, check us out on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel um, and learn more from YSB. Um, spread the word to others in your community um, and in your relationships. Um, just share what you've learned um, and stay tuned for the last podcast on emotions.